What's going on guys? You know who it is, DJ Woo Pig. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Welcome back to the channel. I hope that you stick around, click that subscribe button, and maybe even ring that notification bell. That way you get notified when we got some new content on the channel. Now today we're going to be talking all about power. Now, if you go to any production company across the comp or across the world, you're going to see one of these guys. It's it's a four-way gang box with a standard Edison on the end. That's what we call power stingers. Um, now, they come in a variety of sizes, whether two foot 25 foot, 50 foot, even 100 foot. It's a good way to get four, uh, or four plugs, not four circuits. These are all on the same circuit, but it's a good way to get uh, multiple plug-ins or multiple outlets uh, to your desired destination, whether that be uh, simply behind a sub and a, a lighting stack or all the way out to front of house. It's always nice to have all the power that you need right in one box. That way you don't have to tap in with like triple taps or anything like that. It's all located right there in front of you. These are pretty common. Uh, I've got several of them. I hope that you guys will start building your own. It's always, always a good idea to start building your own power cable now. Uh, the main reason is A, in the long run, it turns out to be a little bit cheaper, and B, you know that you have a quality, reliable, uh, serviceable cable that you can uh, have for years to come. Copper power cable in particular, it's, it's something that you can bank on uh, owning a lot of and it's something that doesn't necessarily lose its value uh, speakers become obsolete power cable does not uh, a lot of the cables in my possession have come uh, you know have served me well and they've got 10 or 12 years of uh, road time underneath their belt you go to other production facilities they've got cables that have been with them since the start as well so building your own power cable is something that you can bank on and today I'm going to teach you how to build your own just as I build my own now, I do want to throw out a quick disclaimer. Power, uh, it's something that you don't want to take lightly. I am not an electrician, nor do I claim to be, but it, you know what we're going to be doing today is pretty simple. But the one thing that you have to do is give electricity its respect. It's something that can kill you, it can damage your uh, equipment, all in the blink of an eye, whether it's plugging in a two or $3,000 speaker or one in, or an, uh, a $15 Amazon LED light, it doesn't matter. It can damage you, uh, it can hurt you. Uh, give electricity its respect when working with these tools. Always test whatever you're gonna build uh, before you go plugging in your equipment. Um, a good thing to do is check for continuity, get a uh, electrical outlet tester, just to make sure that your cable is safe for service. So enough talking, I'm gonna put my GoPro on, that way you can kinda get a point of view of, of where I'm coming from when building your own cable, and hopefully you can put this to work and be building your cables by the time we finish this video. So let's go down to the table and look at all the supplies that we have for today. All right, so now that I have the GoPro on, let's take a look at some of the materials that we are going to need for the job. Now, this here is recycled wire. This is actually a 12 gauge four conductor wire, as you can see. You may be able to see in there, we've got one, two, three, four wires in here. This is just repurposed stuff that I had laying around the shop. Now, you're not always gonna have wire laying around, so you're gonna have to go to the store and buy some, but if you can, it's always good to repurpose materials. This here is just the wires that are inside of the cable itself. These are just 12 gauge wire, uh, as you can see, are, are three black, white, and green those are the most common when you deal with electricity i've simply stripped some of this stuff back and uh and put fork connectors on the end of them just to make it easier when it's inside of our box so that's just 12 gauge wire with the uh with the forks on there this here is an Edison 15 amp, 125 volt Leviton connector when you open it up on the inside you've got your three leads there uh, this isn't necessarily the best one that you can get, but you can get these at Home Depot. There are uh, the Hubble ones. They are a lot better, I would say, uh, easier to put together than these, but they are a lot more expensive. So if you're trying to do this on the cheap, this of course will work. It's just gonna be a little bit, uh, I guess a little bit um, harder or a little bit more complicated in the uh, in the process of making the cable, but um, there's different connectors out there. I would always suggest either a Leviton or a Hubble. 
This is our uh, handy box. This is an inch and a half handy box. I like using these because uh, it's a little bit slimmer of a profile. Um, you can get the deeper ones that are, I believe, a, uh, a two inch. All the, you, you know, you can get some big ones, uh, but this is just about perfect for what you're gonna need. Now, it does have knockouts on the end. We're gonna go ahead, take this knockout out and simply just bend it in, bend it back and forth until that little guy pops out of there. You're not gonna need this guy, you can toss it to the side. Now this is your cable clamp, inch and a half that goes right inside of your knockout like so. Since we've already got it on there, we can go ahead and put it in. And to tighten it up, there is a special tool that you can put it in there uh, to tighten this guy right here up. But I simply take some of my uh, wire strippers and I just tighten it by hand like so watch yourself this is uh all this stuff is sharp so watch yourself whenever you're tightening stuff down but as you can see it the cable is going to slip through here it's going to tighten down with these two flat heads right there sometimes they're phillips and it's going to come in and feed the box itself of course, these are our uh, these are the outlets, 15 amp, 125 volt, just like our cable end. Now they're going to come probably with some extra ear type stuff on there. You're going to have to trim that to make it fit inside of our uh, cover. So trim off that metal there. Uh, you know, I just took a pair of tin snips and cut it off. So uh, as you can see, it's got two on each side with a ground. So that's our outlets. This is our box cover. So we can go ahead and do the same with this guy. Strip it back, knock those tabs off. And that's what it's gonna look like. Your plugs are simply gonna go there. Like so, as soon as we get everything tightened down. So that, these are the tools that you're gonna need to, uh, to do the job. Now, of course, you're also gonna need some electrical components. These are forks. These are known as forks. This is what you're gonna put on the end of the cable coming in, and you're gonna attach it here. Now, I will suggest that you go ahead and start getting uh, a box like this just put together. Uh, anything in the industry, these are all you know standard connectors that you will probably use at some point in time. So uh, picking up a, a box like this, it's simply a tackle box, or they make you know uh, storage boxes like this at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever your local hardware store is. I highly suggest uh, go ahead and starting to put together an electrical kit of some sort uh, because you're going to need this stuff. So uh, we've gotten our three out of there. We're done with this. Let's put it off to the side. Now, the tools that you're gonna need for this job, you have a standard uh, Phillips head that we're gonna use to tighten everything down. Uh, we have some wire strippers. These are made by Klein. Uh, and then we have some uh, cable crimpers. They, they do make cheaper versions of this stuff. Um, you don't necessarily have to get the top of the line stuff, but I will say tools are just like anything else. The more you spend, generally, the better they are. So uh, it's always good to have a nice pair of crimps around. I have a, uh, an electric, little electric uh, screw, screw gun, uh, drill, whatever you want to call it, and a, uh, a razor blade, but we're also, because some of these are a little bit different. Some are Phillips head, some are flat head like this, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a flat head extension bit for my, uh, for my, my driver here, my nut driver. It's going to fit fine. Cool. Okay, so to get started, let's go ahead and start on the cable connector end portion of it, and then we will work about on the uh, on the box itself. So let's take our standard cable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to splice this open, um, and that way we can expose the wire inside of it. So I'm just going to take my razor blade. I'm going to be extra careful. You don't have to cut too deep, but a little scarring will start to open it up for you. And we're just gonna expose the wire underneath and we can get rid of this excess. So you can take uh, your crimps 
Most of them have a cutting end on the end of them. So we're gonna take that and we're just gonna start cutting the, uh, the rubber jacket off. Now this has like a, a paper cardboard style insulation. We're gonna cut all that off as well. It just makes it easier to get, uh, to get inside of it. So this extra cardboard stuff, you can again, take your cutters, cut that extra stuff off of there. And as I was saying earlier, let's get all that stuff off of there. As I was saying earlier, this is a recycled cable from what we have laying around the shop. So you see a black, a white, a green, and also a red on there. That red we're not going to use. So we're going to go ahead and take that opportunity to snip it down as well. So now you have the three wires that you're going to use. We're going to take our strippers. And we don't have to cut off a, a, a whole bunch, but you're gonna cut off maybe a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch off the end of it just to expose the wire. Like so. You can take them and twist the ends of it just so you can keep it nice and neat. Now we're gonna take our, uh, our cap. Always put your cap on before you tighten this stuff up, otherwise you gotta take the whole thing apart. Let's use our screw gun and loosen up these screws. Just enough to separate it in there. Now inside of there, you may be able to see there is a, uh, you guys actually can't see that. How about a little bit more? All right, you can kind of see where it shines through. See that little hole in there? That little hole is gonna keep it from uh, going all the way through. It's just a little kind of waterproof jacket. We're gonna take our knife and just score it so the, uh, the cable will slide through a little bit easier. You're gonna go through the end Take these, kind of twist them together, go through the end, and you should see it pop out on the other side. Like so. There we have our three wires. Now the one thing that it makes uh, it, that makes electricity is, is really as simple as possible. Everything has a color coordination tab. So as you can see, we have a green screw. That of course is gonna go to our green wire. We have a silver screw. That's gonna go to our white wire. And then we have a gold screw. That's gonna go to our black wire. Nine times out of 10 working with electricity, these wires uh, generally always color coordinate some sort of way. Uh, the best way to find a diagram is just to Google uh, 15 amp, 125 volt uh, outlet diagram. And you're gonna be able to find a diagram for just about anything, whether it be a 12.3 cable, a 10.4 cable, 10.5 cable, doesn't really matter. So these are going to uh, crimp down, as you can see on the ends there. I don't know if you guys can see that. They're gonna crimp down inside of its respective Hold. So we're going to start with the green, which is our ground. We're going to slide it in its hole. And we're going to tighten it down. Now, I know what you're saying. How come you didn't use the forks on this end? Uh, how come you just didn't put those on there and, and do that? You can. Uh, I'm, there's nothing wrong with it. There's literally nothing wrong with it. But I find that once you put a fork on there, it, it makes fitting a lot of this stuff in the end a little bit harder, especially on the cheaper Leviton plugs. Uh, this is going to work just as well, but you do have to remember to tighten everything down good. So we're going to make sure that we have that tightened down good. And we're going to move on to our next color, which is the gold, as you can see here. Sometimes you just got to bend some of this stuff back a little bit. Make sure it's twisted and Stick it in there, tighten it down.
Only thing left is the silver, which is our white. Sometimes you gotta finagle this stuff a little bit to get it in there properly. All right, it's in there. Let's tighten this down. All right, now, as you can see, we have our silver, our green, and our black, and they're all in there really good. Make sure you have a solid connection before you put that cable cap on there. Now, if you guys can see on the inside, maybe you can, maybe you can't, um, there is a little notch right there. It lines up with this notch here. There's only one way that this thing is gonna go back on there. So make sure you're paying attention and you don't mess up your cable plug in the process of trying to get it fit on there. As you can see, I'm struggling a little bit trying to get the jacket back down the cable and that's a good thing. You wanna make sure you got a good tight seal. Keep all the dust, debris, water, anything else out of there. All right, once it sits down in there, you can tighten these guys up. All right, and that is our end. We just gotta tighten this guy up on the end. And that is our cable cap. As you can see, super tight fit, looks good, standard old Edison outlet. So that's one end, let's get to the business end, which is our box. So we can sit that guy there. Let's take the, the end of the cable, and we're gonna feed it through this end here. This is where we put our uh, cable clamp on the end with our knockout going through. And you can feed as much through here right now as you, as you want to. Really, we're just trying to, uh, trying to get enough to work with. So this is, once again, our, our cable, our 12, this is a 12-4. We're gonna take this dude and we're gonna split it open to reveal the raw wire inside. Now, of course, you don't want to cut into the wire itself, so it doesn't take much, just a little scoring. Take your fingernails, and you can peel the rest back. Now, for this, you can be a little bit more liberal on how much you strip back. Generally, I go about, uh, about two inches or so, and that should give you all the room that you need. We're going to take our cutters, cut off that plastic jacket. Not plastic, rubber. It's a rubber jacket. And then we're also gonna take this cardboard, whatever insulation, we're gonna cut that all off. Let's get it all in one big bundle. That paper insulation we can cut off as well. And because we're only going to be using three of the wire here, we can cut off this red hot lead as well. So now, once again, we are stuck with our three cables that we need, or our three, uh, three, we're stuck with our three wires that we need. Now we're going to use our strippers. We're going to cut back a little bit of this. Just a little bit, half, an, you know, an uh, eighth of an inch or so, you don't need much. You just need enough for it to bite onto the connector. Take it once again, twist it, make it look pretty. And this is where we're gonna use our forks. So we can take this fork, stick it on the end, use our crimps. As you can see, the crimps, they have that little tooth in there. That is what's gonna bite down on the cable itself, so. And take it, put it in there, crimp it down. We're going to repeat that process for the other two.
last one. And as you can see on there, it made those little indentions. That's what's keeping that uh, fork on the end of it. We can pull on these guys and they're not going anywhere. So that's it for now on that. We're gonna take these guys and we're gonna interconnect them because these are gonna be sharing, uh, sharing power. They're, it's gonna be on the same circuit. They're gonna be sharing power. Um, and as you can see, they make it easy for you with a couple of ends on there for, for you to uh, match up your colors or match up your, your sources. So back to uh, this side, it is a gold. So it's gonna get our black wire. Take it and screw it down. Looks nice and tight. Now we're gonna make sure these are in the, going the same direction. You don't wanna have this number here. That's what you don't want. Make sure they're going the same direction. And we're gonna tighten it down to a black lead or a, a gold lead over here. Okay. We're gonna do the same thing with the white. So. You take your silver end over here, go to one hole, tighten it down. Like so. We're going to come over here. We're going to tighten it down on this one as well. And there you go. You have your hot and your uh, neutral combined on there. So these, these are your two circuits. Now you're probably saying, well, how come you didn't connect the greens? The greens a little bit more different because they don't have, uh, they don't have two. They only have one per side. So it, it kind of make no sense to put one down uh, and then just have to open it up and redo it. So we're going to attach them both at the same time. So we're going to take our ground or green from our input source we're going to put it down first then we're going to take our other you know spare wire we're going to make it to where it sits flush sits flat might have to back that screw out a little bit okay there's one There's two. Just take your time. It will fit in there. You're going to tighten that down. And then you're going to go to the ground on the other plug and you're going to tighten it down as well. Insert it there. Tighten her down. And there you go. These are connected right now, but we still have our other two leads right here that we need to take care of. So as you can see, these both have two on there. So one black is, uh, is already tied to the other plug. This black here can go in on the open spot. We're going to do the same thing with the white on our other side. May have to undo the nut or the screw just a little bit to get the fork in. There we go. And there we go. 
this one here, it's all full. Both of our whites are green and both of our blacks are full. On the other side, we've got a, uh, a black and a white that still have an open spot. But as you can see, that screw may be sticking out just a little bit. So instead of worrying about that screw falling out down the road and, and touching something, potentially messing something up, we're gonna just go ahead and take it, and screw it all the way in. That way we don't have any possibility of it coming out later on down the road. We're going to do the same with the other open slot on the other end. And there we go. Those are our two outlets. Now, this box cover, um, they're going to screw in. You know, they have an open spot right here in the middle. That is where it's going to screw in. Uh, like so. So make sure that you have your uh, holes lined up. We're going to take it. We're just going to screw it down. And now it is attached to the outlet itself. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So this time we're going to do it a little faster. There we go. Now, before we stick this cover onto the box itself, we're gonna do a little bit of a visual inspection. We're gonna make sure that all the cables are nice and snug. None of the, uh, the screws are sticking out any further than they're supposed to. We're just gonna do a visual inspection. This is gonna save you time down the road. Make sure you got everything tight. So once you have everything in there, what you're gonna to wanna to do, these screws on the end that hold the box cover on, we need to take those off. And now we're simply going to pull back all of our excess. We're going to screw, you know, once you have it pushed down to where it all fits nice and flush, you're going to put your screw in there, you're going to screw it down. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. You want to tighten these down as much as you can just to make sure that they're not going anywhere. Okay, so that's that. Now these here on the end for our uh, cable clamp, they are flathead, so we're just gonna exchange our bits. Put our flathead bit in there, and you want these guys pretty tight as well, that way you don't have any problems down the road. And there you go, we have officially completed our cable project. All right, before we uh, officially test this cable, let's do a little bit better job of cleaning it up. As you can see, it's, you know, this was a repurposed cable, so it's kind of dingy and dirty. We're gonna take a little bit of this uh, brake cleaner, you can get this, can get this stuff, stuff at any auto parts store. store. I actually, I actually got, this got this from Harbor, Harbor Freight. Freight. Uh, uh, this good, this stuff, good stuff is good at cleaning off any, any residue or dirt or whatever. Or whatever. Uh, it's going uh, to work fantastically. What I do, what is, I do is, I is I just spray a little spray bit, on, a little bit on, a on a towel. And I just take, take it and I wipe it off. So we got our box plugged up. Uh, one good sign is, it, first, right off the bat, it's not smoking, it's not hot to the touch, 
everything you know it's not making weird electrical noises or anything like that it looks like it should we're going to take our cable tester this is a south wire receptacle tester um, i don't know if you guys can read the writing on that guy or not uh, but we're going for uh, no, no red, red and, and two, two yellows. yellows. That's, That's what, what we, we want, want to happen whenever, whenever we plug, plug this in. Anything, Anything else is going to tell you what's wrong, whether you have an open ground, open ground, neutral, hot, or, or the ground, ground and uh, hot, hot reverse. reverse. It's going to let you know any problems, problems that you may have. have. Uh, we, we just want to see two ambers and no red. So let's plug it in, see what happens. And as you can see, we have, we have two embers, no, no red. red. So, that so that means it's working correctly. Now, now let's go, go ahead and go, and go through and test all of these. Once, Once again, it's working correctly. Let's, let's test, test this third one. one. And, and test, test the, fourth. the fourth one. Look at, Look at that. that. Perfect. So, so that, that means our 25 foot stinger is working Fantastically, this thing right here, as soon as we finish cleaning it up, is ready to be put into service. And that, my friends, is how you do it. That's how you make your own power cable. I hope that you guys can take what you've kind of learned here today. Uh, go back, rewatch it if you've got any questions on how uh, this thing is put together. It's all pretty simple. Uh, most electrical wiring diagrams can be found online. Just do a simple Google search and you're going to be able to make your own power stinger. These things uh, come in handy. I've got no less than a dozen of them and I generally make my own power cable too. You don't necessarily have to put a quad box on the end. You can put another cable cap uh, and just make a long extension cable. So if you've got some friends that, you know, say they have some wire they're getting rid of, uh, always ask them, hey, uh, you mind if I come by and take a look at it? I'd you know, like to have it. Maybe I can use it. You know, repurposed materials like this are going to save you uh, some money and some time down the road when uh, building your power cable. I can't tell you how often somebody asks for a power drop to their location, whether it be to a broadcast truck, a, uh, a recording truck, a, a rig, a different rig, it doesn't matter. Power is something that will never be obsolete, especially in our industry. So uh, I hope you guys learned something today. If you got any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comment section below. Maybe the community can help you out. Or if it's a little bit more personable, send me an email, djwoopig at gmail.com or follow Follow me on all of my social media platforms. You can find just about all of them at DJ Woopig, Instagram in particular. I'm on there all the time. As always, I appreciate you guys sticking around. Be sure to click that subscribe button, the notification bell, and, uh, and give this video a big thumbs up if you're going to actually do this at your shop to make some power cable. Until next time, guys, it's been DJ Woo Pig. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope that you'll come back next week when we dive into something different. We'll see you later. Peace.